Today on the SN95 Owner's Guide, we install the cheapest Mustang shifter you can buy, the Econo Shift from Late Model Restoration on our V6 Mustang. Welcome, I am Darren and I'm joined today with Sean and this is the SN95 Owner's Guide, the series where we talk about SN95 Mustangs, V6, V8, Cobra and beyond and today we've got Sean's Sixer. Now, you may not know Sean from the SN95 series, but you may recognize him from other Grand Touring Concepts videos where we've done a lot of cool things together. And we've got a Sixer here and Sean is tired of the broom handle in a bucket shifting action in his T5 Mustang. It's also bad. It is bent. Yeah, it's very much bent. So Sean put it up to me, he's like, what is the cheapest shifter you can find? And I was able to look around the internet and I found the LMR Econo Shift Shifter, which is not a very impressive name really, but it's like 70 bucks. Cheapest possible thing, cheaper than used, cheaper, cheaper than eBay. We're gonna throw it in the Sixer because if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter, it's just a Sixer. But if it goes well, well, hey, you guys can uh, possibly look at picking one up. This will be a good durability test. Yeah, Sean has broken a couple of shifters before in his Fox, his 5 liter Fox nitrous car. And Sean was well known for breaking transmissions, components, uh, bell housings, and shifters. Everything. So if it holds up to Sean, check back, of course, for about a 90 day uh, recheck. But if it holds up to Sean, well, it should probably hold up to your uses as well. But let's cover the parts on the bench and show you what you're getting for your money. Okay, Sean, why don't you give us a rundown of the parts? We have the shifter, the main shift component. One thing to note, it does not come with the plastic piece. Some shifters do, some shifters don't. You'll have to reuse the one out of the car. Other than that, it's not bad. It's made of aluminum. It is aluminum. This piece has been milled. It has adjustable detents for side to side. And it comes with an extra set of stiffer springs. We'll be putting them in. Besides that, you get a bunch of fasteners. You have your blue link goes there then you get your top piece goes like that I expect if anything breaks it'll be this piece yeah that's a multi-piece handle and that is just a piece of presumably billet aluminum but I bet you that's gonna be a failure mode but if that's all we break we can always put another handle onto the shifter base of a better quality e yes easily and we have a quintessential white shift knob to put on it now the only thing that this kit did not come with is it didn't come with a jam nut for a shift knob because, well, the factory ones don't need one. Uh, other than that, you got your jam nuts with your shift detent lockouts, mm -hmm. so you can adjust your travel. Make sure you don't overgo and bend your shift forks. Yeah, all the hardware, as little as there is, and there's not really much needed. Sure, and this will fit a T5, T45, doesn't matter whether it's V6, Cobra, or 5 liter. Or but four banger. Or four banger, and if you do have a 3650, you will need a different shift model, but they, they have an Econo shift for that one as well. But uh, yeah, let's get to installing this one. This is a really simple process, and anyone should be able to do it. It's one of the first mods I did on my own GTS years ago. Okay, Sean, so before we start putting in the new one, how about you demonstrate how crappy the old one is? Well, right now she's in first gear. Yep. This is how much play you have in first, which is pretty bad, second the same. Pretty much every gear is the same amount of play. But the worst part about it is full travel. So we measured it from third down to fourth is five inches of travel from top of knob. As well as when you go from, you know, second to third, you have to go over further and up too. So your travel is all over the place, greatly exacerbated by a long handle in any gear, not just straight forward and back. Right. So we're looking to improve that. What's the first steps? First steps, shift knob off, and then we pull the bezel out. Perfect. Removing the shift knob is a simple matter of lefty loosey. There's no special trick to it, although it may be tight if it's been on there for years. We'll be discarding our shift knob and not using it again, because Sean's got that trick white shift ball that he really likes. Once you've got the shift knob off, it's a matter of just pulling the bezel up and away. Be careful here, plastic can be brittle, but it will come out. 
with that junk off and out of the way, we can show you part of the reason why these things are so soft feeling and mushy. If you look in here, they have rubber in between the main shift tower and your shift lever. And it's encapsulated by rubber on the back. So the whole thing is rubber bush. So it's got a lot of extra play on it, which is supposed to give a nicer shift feel, but now nah, it's a broom handle and a bucket. Next step is remove the shift lever, pull access panel, then we can get at the actual shifter. Next stage in the process is to pull the four bolts out. We're gonna use one of these, there's just one each corner. And from there, we have to put the shifter back on. Because to break the seal to get this off, there's no way to pry on it. So shifter on, leverage, and pull up and away. Try not to knock your mirror off. Don't hit yourself in the face or anything else and hurt yourself. Okay, so Sean's got the shifter reinstalled and all of the bolts are out of the shifter tower, the shifter base. And this is where things get really inelegant. Essentially, there is gasket sealant binding the shifter to the top of the uh, transmission. And Sean's going to have to brute force and ignorance this thing out. Without breaking my audio broken interior or knocking this off or hurting anything else or myself. Cool. Do it to it. That wasn't even staged. Uh, <laughs> so, apparently that shifter's been out before. Usually that is a miserable task. This has been out. And they didn't even put new silicone down when they re it down. Cool. So... I almost... I was expecting, like, it's a good thing I didn't pull it. I would have hit myself with this thing as a, boy, there was no resistance. That would have been a gag. But uh, anyway, that's usually a much more uh, miserable process. So, hey, we got away with something easy on this car for once. And that plastic piece I was talking about stayed in the shift piece inside. Yes, that needs to be transferred over to the new shifter. Sometimes they stick on this. Yes. Okay, well, we're well on our way. Let's assemble the new shifter and plop it in there. So, Sean, you're changing out the shift centering springs. Those basically set the bias between, like, your 2-3 upshift and help center off the shifter yep. so you don't have to steer it so much. Well, yeah, it's, uh, you can either have a softer spring, which also it helps it return to center. When you put it in neutral, it stands up right in the center, so you get detent, detent, helps with your forward back, more positive shifting. Right. They come with the soft spring in them, and if you actually look at the, there's a thick one and a thin one. It comes in the package with the soft ones, but I'm putting the thick ones in because I do prefer more spring pressure, as well as I notice that with the soft ones in and them down, just like this, not in the car, it didn't want to return. It kind of stay, stayed one side or the other. We're going to make it work our best chances we have of being good. And in the background, you've got a Loctite stick, which uh, we recommend blue Loctite on every single fastener on this thing because if anything's going to fail, it'll be vibrations. I've had a shifter fall apart. I had a UPR Blue Thunder years ago in my 95, yep. and the shifter fell off, uh, the handle fell off the base once. It was uh, an interesting drive home. It usually does it mid-shift or at the drag strip when you do not want it to happen. Yes, so Loctite every single fastener. Everything you see us putting together is going in with blue Loctite. If it has threads, thread locker. All right, so while we were setting up our higher bias springs. We found that the shifter was a little bit crunchy right out of the box, and then with the new springs it was worse, and uh, Sean's gotten to the bottom of it. So when this thing was uh, together, when we took it apart, it had this spring, then this little study pad thing sitting just like that down in there with the plunger pushing on top. So that meant that the round stock in the hole you know, the pivot point of the shifter was pushing on an open side spring, which lets it just bind, stick, and jam. What they should have done is turned this around, and it actually goes in the other way. So it was assembled wrong right from factory. Sure. So what you're going to want to do is pop these apart and put the little, uh, the little spacers to the bottom so you've got that nice, smooth engagement surface for the shifter to yeah, ride on. it puts the round stock pushing on a flat aluminum plate Yeah. instead of... Because the top doesn't need a plunger because that's flat anyways. Yeah, and there's no moving parts there. So no. this just makes sense. So someone get this thing inverted at the factory. Make sure you check yours out. For $60, don't expect a real great assembly. Yeah, well, you get what you get, right? You, you check everything. Next so, part of the bench assembly is we're going to install the shift stops. These are the one things that do not get Loctited. Ignore the other part we said about everything. These things don't get. That's because they have a gigantic jam nut. They do. Yeah. They got the jam nut which will lock them in. So we're going to put them in, just put them a little bit. As you see, they literally just thread in and they will limit how far this goes. So they go in quite a ways. 
Yeah, so this is especially important on a T5 transmission because uh, it's possible to overshift. You basically uh, push too far and it can cause damage to the shift linkage inside the transmission or harm your forks or break them. T45s already come out of the box with an internal shift stop. It's one of the upgrades that they did make, but those are only applicable to the 4.6 cars. So all I'm doing is I'm just threading it in deep enough so that when the shifter's at its max range right now, it just touches. Once it's in the car, all bolted down, we adjust that stuff after. So thread it in, jam that on, just snug by hand. Good until we're ready to go. All right, we're ready to drop that on. A little bit of silicone, a little bit of dropping in, good to go. Next step for the install is silicone. You can try and put this down in the hole and go around the top of the transmission, but easy to get it all over the interior, especially if you have an interior that matters. We don't really, but it's just a mess to clean up. Easiest way is to put some across the top. Put a bit. Smear it around with your finger. You don't need a huge amount or a lot. You don't even have to be real uh, high tech with it. Yeah, so we've got that all set up. We're going to drop that into the uh, shift linkage in the top of the transmission, making sure that the ball does go into that little plastic cup. Yep. Super important. And then we've got our four Allen heads that are going to affix this thing to the top of the transmission. Things are going pretty smooth. Got our shifter, kind of got it in the center. Transmission's in neutral. Should just be a matter of dropping this thing in. Feels like it's in. Looks like it's in. Went in a bit snug. Sure. Not bad. No, just kind of okay. So, a little dab of Loctite and uh, into the Allen heads, which are Pretty nice looking fasteners, but every single fastener on this shifter is metric because China. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a very important thing. If you don't have metric uh, Allen keys or uh, sockets, you're going you're gonna to have a rough time trying to install this piece. We have the shifter all together mocked up with the handle the shift knob. Now it's time to adjust the shift stops. Take a 6mm Allen key. Try and do it with this hand so you can see. You turn the the bolt in until it just touches and back it out three quarters of a turn so that you have about a dime's width between the stop and your shifter. Then you lock it down there and that's where you go. That lets you get all the play, but if you overshift, it comes against the stop, but it makes sure that she engages fully because not engaging the whole way under power is even more detrimental. Bad things happen. Sure, and once you get it set there all the way forward, you move it into fourth gear. Yep. And repeat the process. Repeat exactly. the process. When you have both of them locked, take this back off, put your boot on, reinstall most of your stuff, put it back together Loctite, put your outer boot on, good go. One final thing before we put the bezel back on. The shifter does have two positions. It's got three holes down here. You either have it at high or way too low. In one of these cars with the curved bevel, everything in the way, highly recommend keeping it on the highest setting. Low may work in a Fox. They have a lot of a lower center console, a lot less things in the way, but that one's up to you. Okay, Sean, so you get the shifter all installed. You've got the bezel in. Everything's hooked up, tightened down, torqued down, good to go. Yep. Run it through the gears. Actually goes really nice. Yeah, so how would you peg that on par, right? Like we've driven Steeda Triaxes, UPR Blue Thunders, a couple of Hurst offerings. This actually feels better than the Hurst in my car. Yep. It's a shorter throw. Okay. And I had that set at stupid low. Yes. It feels basically identical to your 95. Okay, so that had a UPR Blue Thunder in its original uh, T5. It's now got a Tremec shifter because yep. it's, it it's got a TKO just now. just like your car did before. And actually, except for... You know, your transmission being the tougher one, which is a little notchy, for actual shifter, it's about the same. Yeah, I find that one's really smooth. It's uh, quite good. How do we end up for uh, shift reduction? What's our throw? We're three and a half inches now. So we went from a five inch throw to three and a half inches. So pulled an inch and a half out of it. Yeah, which is significant on the, uh, on the lever end, so. As well as, look, in gear, that's it. Yeah, no you movement. You get a little bit of side to side from the, but you have no actual, there's no, well, there's no rubber bushings to take up play. Yeah, so this is cheap, simple, effective, seems to work. Yeah. Pretty pleased with it. And we haven't broken it yet in testing. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, and that's that. We managed to put in the very cheapest 
manual transmission shifter you can buy for a Mustang on the market to date. Anyway, um, everything went really well. We're quite impressed with it. Sean and I both think that this is a pretty good option. We are definitely going to put it through its paces in its durability testing. And if we run into any troubles, we will definitely put that together in a video as well as uh, on Facebook at Grand Touring Concepts. So if you enjoyed this sort of content, we'd really like to have you along. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, when you can see more of this car and other cool stuff, later. Chunky piece. There's that. You don't even have to be real uh, high tech with it.